Yeah, thank you everyone. So uh, we're going to start the talk. Uh, I just want to start by uh, thanking um, my, my co-workers. This is joint work with Alex Bradbury and Andy Wingo. Uh, I'd like to thank the Google Wasm Tools team for you know, suggestions and discussions the last couple of years about this, and Bloomberg, who have been sponsoring this work. Um, so let's start. WebAssembly. The WebAssembly is a virtual machine, so it's a language that runs on a virtual machine. Uh, and it has a specification, an open specification, it's online. Um, and one of the things that I would like to clarify at this point is that I'm going to talk a little bit about sometimes refer to the host system. The host system is the system that basically implements the WebAssembly virtual machine. Um, and for the purposes of this talk, because I'm interested in how WebAssembly uh, interacts with the web, uh, it's the, the host system is JavaScript. So uh, WebAssembly is a Harvard architecture. Uh, we have basically well-typed functions uh, arranged in modules. There are some inter interesting peculiarities where some things you cannot uh, get access to the, to the address of, like, you know, uh, model level globals and function level locals, you cannot access it. It's also a stack machine, uh, but the stack is implicit, so you cannot actually uh, access the stack. And then, in the beginning, uh, it, it, was, it, it was a very simple machine, right? It had only four numeric types. So th those were the only types available in WebAssembly. And uh, those are, as you can imagine, two types of integers. That's 32 and 64 bits. Two types of floats, 32 and 64 bits. Uh, and we had a specification that would provide instructions to manipulate these types and load instead instructions to manipulate the memory. The memory is what we call the linear memory. It's literally just uh, an array of bytes. So. What can we do? Actually, we can already do a lot of stuff. Uh, we can suddenly already compile something like this, right? We have an array, vals of doubles, um, and we have two functions, one that stores and one that fetches the double. And if you ran Clang nowadays, uh, you will be able to get something out of it. Um, so actually, you can already try these kind of things on, in Compiler Explorer. and I'm just going to go through so you have an idea of uh, what it looks like. Um, so just very quickly, local get will get the, the, the local, uh, a local from uh, the stack. Uh, all the arguments to a function are put on the stack automatically. Uh, and local get will get the first argument from the stack. We synthesize in line three a const, the constant three and put it on the stack. And we call SHL to do a shift left on the two, on the two uh, top two uh, values in the stack. And we put the result back in the stack, et cetera, et cetera. We go on. And then one of the things that you might wonder is what is that F64 store zero? So the store is basically obviously stores something into memory. And zero is actually the index of the memory because there was this idea that you could have inside the WebAssembly module many linear memories provided by uh, the host system. And the zero is the memory you're going to use to store the top two values on the stack. So one is going to be, one is going to be uh, the index um, in the linear memory that you want to store the value, and the other one is going to be the value itself. So fetch double is, going, is more or less uh, similar, but instead of having a a store, we have a load, uh, we have a load instruction. Okay, so this is what already exists. Um, but WebAssembly is an evolving language. Uh, the, the specification of WebAssembly keeps evolving, had new features. Proposals and discussions on proposals, et cetera, are all online. Uh, the discussions about which proposals should be accepted into the main specification is done online. Uh, and for the last couple of years, we've had many, many accepted proposals, and many of them are still, uh, are still being discussed. 
and accepted. So one of those that we're interested on is reference types. So this means how, what if the double that we had there, that array of doubles, is a JavaScript value, is a value that is sent from the host, uh, from the host system and that we uh, have to deal with. So reference types uh, are interesting. So first, they are opaque and host managed. And w even though they can be uh, arguments or functions and return values of functions, they can be stored to globals, but uh, they cannot be stored to linear memory. So because they don't have uh, a bit representation in memory, so you cannot just uh, store to linear memory like, let's say, an integer or a float, etc. There are two different types. One is the external ref, which is completely opaque, you cannot do anything with it. And the other is func ref, which is an opaque reference to a function that exists in the host system, and the only thing you can do from the WebAssembly side is call it. So that, that, um, that code there will not work. Why won't it work? Because we cannot store JSVELs to linear memory so that JSVEL, uh, JSVEL VELs is not valid. So how do we store reference types on, um, in WebAssembly? Well, that is, okay, so one, one of the things that we're trying to do here, or actually the main challenge here, is how to represent all of these types throughout the whole tool chain, not just in LVM, but also in Clang. So what, uh, how do we store these values? The reference types proposal introduced something called tables, which are sort of like something even a bit stranger than uh, the types, the reference types themselves, because they're sort of like arrays to store reference types, but with a bunch more constraints. Uh, like, for example, you cannot store tables anywhere. You cannot pass tables into functions, out of functions. They're basically just a global static um, storage uh, thing at, for reference types. So it's almost like the memory for reference types, but it cannot be the linear memory itself, because again, reference types don't have a don't have a bit representation. Okay, so let's see this example. So uh, this is the same as the previous example, but now I replaced JSVAL to our explicit type, let's call it external ref. So this is part of our proposal uh, to extend C and C++ uh, with, with WebAssembly reference types. So we have a, a, an array of external refs, and we give it the attribute wasm table, uh, and we do again a store and a fetch, and we would expect something like that to be generated. So we basically just get the first two arguments of the function to store, and we call table set. That's it. So, now, how is this done in LLVMIR? So this has landed. This was part of our work uh, last year has landed, and the way we represent these things in LVMIR is through the use of address spaces. So we have uh, non-integral address spaces so that you cannot uh, do things like pointer to int and, inter to point to, uh, and integer to pointer, and all values of external ref type are just pointers to address space 10, all values of func ref type are just pointers to address space 20, and then we define tables as module level arrays uh, in address space one, simply because we need an address space that will tell us, uh, that allows us to identify an object so we can implement some semantic uh, constraints like uh, you cannot do certain things with it. Um, okay, and this is relatively straightforward because then we can lower these to the respective MVTs um, and then generate uh, WebAssembly uh, code. Okay, and then, to manipulate these reference types, we have in LVM a bunch of, uh, a bunch of intrinsics, like LVM, WASM table, set, external ref. We have similar ones for func ref. And uh, if you use nowadays, um, sorry, not moving, ah, yeah. So if you use nowadays Compiler Explorer, and we, you write down this LVMIR, you get already 
the code that we expected to get earlier on. So this is fine. So, but what's the story in Clang? So what do we want to do? We want to be able to tell the user, the C++ uh, developer, that they can write C++ code uh, and can access uh, objects from the host system uh, and manipulate them. So we need a way to represent reference types in C and C++ and then a way to lower them to LVMIR. And this is sort of like has been the theme of our work throughout this year. So there are initial prototypes and it's not complete. Uh, and actually, um, I, do, I am aware that there is uh, work, uh, so other people have faced similar problems. I know that there is some, some resemblance of uh, our, the constraints that we have with reference types, for example, with ARM scalable vector extension. And there is also some um, discussions about uh, SPURV uh, types uh, representation uh, that sort of overlaps a little bit with the problems that we're having. Uh, and so we're also following the RFC um, about these, um, about uh, opaque types, which if I'm not mistaken, just a couple of days was renamed to target, um, target extension types. So we're not the only ones who have similar problems and the idea is that we're gonna to try to work together towards a solution, but the way we're representing this uh, in our tests uh, nowadays is to have a new type for external ref. We implement all the, the, the semantic constraints in SAMA, and then we lower this, as said, to an LVMIR, uh, to LVMIR as a pointer to address space 10. Uh, and similarly, um, similarly to func ref, except it's not a new type, but it's just an attribute to a function pointer so that then we can just call that function um, and lower it to uh, address space 20. Okay, the problem tables are, are sort of like what has been taken most time, most time for us, because tables almost feel like a, a race. But then when we try to implement them as a race, so using array surface syntax and array lowering, and so, that's the first bullet, bullet point. Uh, representing tables as a race and then using array subscripts to do store and loads from tables doesn't work so well because at certain optimization levels, Clang is gonna mess up uh, array subscripts because the semantics of C++, C++ arrays is not the same as C++ tables and changing all the places where the semantics are not the same uh, is quite a huge uh, amount of work and you always run the risk of not catching all of them. And so alternatively we tried to do instead, okay, let's instead, it's very interesting or it's very nice for the user to have tables as, as arrays, but what about instead of lowering this to array subscripts, so access this to, to the table, let's lower this into a new, new, new node that's a table subscript. And this is done um, also like that for uh, matrix, um, matrix types that was added a couple of years ago. There's also a matrix subscript. The problem with this is that there's actually quite a bit of work to be done when you implement a new uh, AST node, like implementing new debug information, AB, ABI information, et cetera. And we're actually quite keen on having an end-to-end -end example. Uh, and therefore, uh, we want a solution that's you know, slightly quicker to get there. And the solution, which is not as ergonomic, but it's a quicker path to our goal of having something, is um, actually forget about uh, array uh, store and load using an array uh, syntax. Let's just use um, intrinsics. And so, actually we have uh, solutions for these three cases. So we have a, a patch, um, upstream for, the, for our first case, which doesn't work so well, so we'll have to review it. We have a work in, patch, a work in progress patch for the second, uh, where we implement actually a new node for Clang called uh, table subscript, and we're trying out the third approach. And our hope is that we will actually uh, get something 
quickly uh, using the third approach, so an end-to-end -end example of using reference types uh, all the way from C++ uh, to uh, WebAssembly. And if we can get this end-to-end -end example, then we can work out you know, where we want to go from here and work on a, on a, on a more or a nicer solution uh, using the second approach. Okay, so our problems don't end here because there is a new proposal called uh, WebAssembly Garbage Collection. So the WebAssembly Garbage Collection uh, is a proposal that's um, introducing uh, de the definition of new types, that's array and structs. What this means is that now we can create um, types in WebAssembly or uh, that uh, are garbage collected in the host system. So this is, by the way, unrelated to GC support in LLVM. And this new proposal uh, uh, has uh, instructions to manipula manipulate these types. And a lot of the work that we're doing at the moment is how can we represent uh, these types, which uh, are potentially uh, an enormous amount of types, depending on, on the application that we're compiling, uh, in, in LLVM. But obviously, we want in the, next, uh, in the next year or so to bring all of these uh, to Clang as well. So, so the current problem is that we cannot use the same approach we used before of saying, you know what, there's a new type, there's a new address space. Because, you know, potentially, and if you think about LTO and everything else, you might have, you know, all of these, in a, everything in a single WebAssembly module, you might have potentially thousands, not millions of new uh, types. So the problem is that we need to produce uh, correctly typed you know, locals, function references, uh, uh, arrays and structures, function arguments and return values. And we need to keep these types throughout the throughout the, the LLVM backend. And obviously having a new MVT for each type doesn't work. So the key property is that we don't lose track of the type of a value. If we define a new struct uh, and that struct has you know, a, couple of, um, a couple of fields and then we have a value of that struct that we're passing around, we need to keep track of that, uh, track of that type throughout the backend. And the, the way we're doing that is we're, going, we're assigning, uh, we're assigning um, uh, we have a metadata table at the module level, and for each canonical type, we're assigning a new address space. So I just said that we're not gonna assign address spaces, but because this is a prototype, that's what we're going to do now. So for now, uh, to experiment with this solution, we intend to use uh, address spaces for canonical types, but not necessarily, obviously, one for different values. So if we have uh, two values uh, that have the same type, we'll only use one address space. And we sort of like make everything into one. Okay, so this is the kind of example that we intend to, 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 to work on, to have uh, working on. We have some uh, downstream patches uh, to already implement these where instead of having the uh, address space 10 and 24 external ref and func ref, when we have an external ref value, we'll assign it one address space over 255, and then we'll have a module level uh, metadata table that will tell us uh, what address space. So I'll just, there's another example, I'll just uh, skip it through because we're reaching the end of time. And the last, thing that I wanted to mention is that there's also string refs, which is another proposal that we want to support, which are basically garbage collected strings from the host system. But these will have no, uh, will introduce no issues because um, we can reuse the same type of solution that we had before. And so this is the summary. The reference types in LVMIR is implemented, it has landed. So we have patches for the second reference types in Clang, and then 
Uh, we're sort of like working through the remaining items and the last two is still a lot of research and prototyping, etc. So yeah, thank you very much. We're hiring in case you're this kind of work interests you. Thank you very much.